Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. So in continuation with the previous session, I shall be explaining you the counting semaphore here. So previous session, you have seen the two types of semaphores, binary and the counting semaphore. You have seen the down operation and up operation for the binary semaphore. Similarly here, you have the down operation and up operation for the counting semaphore. Also, we'll see here what is the use of the counting semaphore. And this is what the pseudocode is given here. Uh, it is a structure. You have written here a value which will store the value of the semaphore and there is a queue. So in this particular queue, we will be storing what all the processes that are getting blocked and also will maintain a separate list wherein we are maintaining all the processes that are entering into the critical section. The definition for down and up as and when I proceed with the example, I will be telling you here. So basically, if you see the difference between the definition in this down operation for counting semaphore, first the value is decremented then the condition is checked okay and here in the up semaphore first the value is incremented and then the condition is checked so in the previous session i have explained you about the sleep and wake concept there you have seen that the two processes gets blocked because both can enter into the sleep mode why both were able to enter into the sleep mode is when the producer was sending a wake up signal to the consumer okay this wake up signals were getting lost Okay, the consumer was not at all receiving the wake up signals. Instead now, if at all we have a mechanism wherein we can store the wake up signals in a variable that is the semaphore variable so that the consumer can always check every time the value for the semaphore here before it goes into the sleep mode. So this particular thing we will look into the, we will we'll, uh, just see with an example. Now uh, this is a counting semaphore. Now let me first tell you about the, okay, we want the processes to be entering into the critical section. Now suppose, see all these time I was telling that there should be one process in the critical section at any point of time. Suppose if I initialize the value for semaphore as 3, that means I am I want 3 processes to be present in the critical section. Why we want 3 processes? If you want 5 processes in the critical section, then you make it as 5. If you want 3, you make it as 3. As many number of processes you want at the same time to be present in the critical section, you can initialize the value here in case of counting semaphore. Now process P1 wants to enter into the critical section. Initial value for the semaphore is 3. It will perform what? Because for process P1 also what is that? Entry code, then critical section and exit. These three it has to perform. So in the ent entry is what? The down operation and exit is what? The up operation. So in the down operation, it will try to do this particular instructions. If it wants to enter into the critical section, it will perform the entry section code that is the down. The down says that decrement the value that is s dot value minus 1, it becomes 2 here. Check the condition, 2 is less than 0, no 2 is greater than 0. The condition is what? The condition is false here. If the condition is false, the control will come to the else part. That means the process P1 can enter into the critical section. If the value is true, definitely if the value is true here, it will execute these lines of instruction. If the value is false here, directly it will go to the else part and it will enter into the critical section. So that is how P1 has entered. Suppose if P2 wants to enter, whether P2 can also enter, P2 will perform the down operation. It will decrement the value of semaphore by 1. It will check 1 less than 0. 1 less than 0, condition is false, it will skip this, it will enter into the critical section. Whether P3 wants to enter into critical section, it will check the value 1, 1 minus 1, 0. So, semaphore value becomes 0 here. If 0 less than 0, condition is what? False, 0 is not less than 0, 0 is equal to 0. So, then once again, it will come out of this loop and it will enter the else part. Else part is what? Enter into the critical section. P4 wants to enter. 0, first it will reduce the value for 1, so 0 becomes what, minus 1 now, it will check minus 1 less than 0, condition is true. Now, the condition has become true. Put the process in L, okay. In the queue, you have to put that process. It is like getting blocked. So, P4 was not able to enter into the, that is why we will maintain here in this queue, P4 is in the queue, okay. Whereas, in the critical section, these three processes are there. Now let us take P5 wants to enter, P5 will decrement the value, presently the value is minus 1, decrementing becomes what, minus 2, okay, decrementing becomes minus 2, it will check minus 2 less than 0, condition is true, once again this will be put in the queue, okay, it will get blocked. Now in this way you can make whatever processes that starts coming here will simply be in the queue only, 
unless some process which is already there should come out. Now let us see whether we will make one process to come out. Suppose if P1 wants to come out, it will perform what the down operation uh, when P1 wants to come out, it will perform the exit code. Now exit part is what the up operation. P1 has to perform the up operation here to come out. So a current value is 1. Up operation is what s dot value equal to s dot value plus 1. So if it has to add plus 1 here, the value of semaphore becomes minus 1. Once minus 1 becomes, check the condition. Minus 1 less than or equal to 0. Condition is what? Condition is minus 1 less than or equal to 0. Yes, the condition is true. If the condition is true, select a process from the L. Select a process from the L. That means the one which was blocked, the one which was in the sleep mode to wake it up. So P4 will be, P4 will come here. Okay. That means P1 will come out now and P4 will make it entry. So hope, shall I repeat this for the previous part? At this point, it was minus 2. P1 wanted to come out. P1 performed the up operation. It incremented the value by S yes, uh, by 1. So the value became minus 1. Check the condition here. Minus 1 less than or equal to 0. The condition is true. So it will select the process from the queue and it will uh, enter into the, the one which was there in the queue will enter into the critical section. So you have made three processes. Still there is one process which is there in the queue. Suppose if P2 wants to okay, come out from the critical section and it has to run its exit code. Exit is what the up operation on the semaphore. So it will write here s dot value equal to s dot value plus 1. So when it uh, increments by 1 the value becomes 0 and 0 less than or equal to 0. Yes, it is true and it will select a process here from the queue and it will wake up. Wake up here. So it will come into the critical section. Now P2 has also come out and P5 is here. At present in the critical section are which processes? P3, P4 and okay, P3, P4 and P5. These five are the uh, these three processes are there in the critical section. Now the present value of zero is uh, present value of semaphore is zero. Now from whatever whatever are the values here, you can come to know one information. If the value for the semaphore at any point of time here becomes zero, it indicates that there are no processes in the blocked state. So you can see that there are no processes in the block state. Any point of time, if yes it is 3, it indicates that there are 3 processes in the block state. Okay. Uh, sorry, there are 3 processes in the critical uh, section. If you see a value minus 1, this 1 indicates there is 1 process in the block state. So the numbers here that are there in the semaphore also gives you one information how many processes are in the critical section and how many processes are in the blocked state. So when you started with 3, your intention was that, that you have to make 3 processes enter into the critical section. So till now we were uh, learning that no, only one process should be there in the critical section at any point of time. How can we make more than one process enter into critical section? So as I said in the previous session, this is also mainly the semaphores can also be used for resource management. You have limited resources, then you have to give only that many processes to uh, access those resources. So just for example, I'll tell you, if, uh, if you have only three uh, printers, okay, if you want to give one printer to each process, then you have to make what only three processes so that these three processes can take one one printer to complete their job. If you try to add one more process here, that process becomes that process will be entering into the block state. Once any other process, the previous process which was holding the printer releases that, then the one which was in the block state can now acquire the printer. So this is what we say. This is just an example resource. I'm taking it here as a printer. It can be anything depending on the limited resources. Okay, then you have to make what only that many processes to because you cannot give one printer to two processes P1 and P2 uh, both the processes are making use of this resource at the same time then it will give it to what inconsistent results. So that is what we have seen that it will uh, lead to race condition. So this that was the very first topic. So to overcome these problems only we have been seeing different solutions to solve this problem. And finally we have used this concept of semaphore in that we have seen today the counting semaphore also. Here on in this counting semaphore only we are trying to tell that we are allowing more number of processes to enter into the critical section depending on the resources that are available in the system. I hope this session is useful to you all. If you like this please like share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.